after the bell. Welcome all, John. Um, market kind of hovering here at the index level, another day where the majority of stocks not really participating. What's your read uh, as we sort of click modestly to new records, but everyone has a question about whether it's sustainable? Right, exactly. I'm bullish but cautious here on the tape. Uh, if you look at the chart of the S&P 500, higher highs, higher lows, moving averages in the right directions, what's not to like? There's plenty we can argue about, but I'm still bullish. I think the S&P can get up to around 55, 50 or so on this next leg higher before something more serious could happen. And so if you're bullish on the index, the index itself is kind of the truth at this point in terms of aggregate market behavior. Would you kind of own an S&P-like portfolio? In other words, you're not looking to, yes. to, to pull laggards? That's exactly right. You want to be where the strength is. And that's what this narrow breadth is telling us, right? If, if, if breadth is terrible, don't fight it. Embrace it. Mm -hmm. Be in those areas of the market that, that are the strongest, the best charts. So you want to lean into it. If you think back in 1998, if you folded your arms and you were bearish from 98 to 2000, yeah. I guarantee you got tapped on the shoulder. Yeah, 1998, that's when, you know, the Dow transport started to lag in a narrow market. And then you had two years to, uh, to kind of sit there as the market went higher. Um, when it comes to the time of year, it's interesting, a lot of focus on July as being this melt up potential for the Nasdaq. If you look at the seasonal tendencies and where flows might come from. On the other hand, late June, sometimes a little choppy. Yeah. And then you have the election year dynamics. So how do you synthesize all yeah, that? Yeah, so the good way to think, think about it is a lot of my clients are asking me, I don't get it. Why is the S&P at all time highs and VIX is all time lows and we have this crazy election coming up? But historically, when you look at the seasonal trends for VIX in particular, it actually trends down lower throughout the election year then bottom somewhere in mid-August, and then ramps up, and guess where it peaks? Election day, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of par for the course to see VIX at lows, S&P at highs, and even going into what should be an insane election season, it's pretty consistent with historical norms. And I, I keep pointing out, too, I mean, when it comes to the VIX, the volatility index, the fact that you have a lot of um, kind of divergences within the market, parts of the index going down, others going up, the index level of volatility has been really calm. It has been relatively common. It's a pretty orderly advance for the S&P. Yeah. But you've talked a lot about, and everybody else is, it's the rest of the market that's yeah. not orderly at all. Small caps, mid caps, unprofitable companies, higher beta stocks, completely different sure. story altogether. When you say kind of take what the market's giving you, I mean, semiconductors remain at the focal point. Uh, it's hard to deny their leadership. On the other hand, is it getting extended? Is the risk reward? Has it basically they've been too good for too long? Yeah, I think so. I think on a shorter term basis, the risk reward is not favorable anymore. I think it's one to one. Uh, longer term, I, I brought a chart that goes back to 1969 and it shows that it broke out of a 20 year base in 2020. And there's still upside to be had on that chart. So from very simple chart reading, the yeah. count, there's still another 80% potential on the upside on that particular chart. But on a shorter term basis, it's way too high above its, uh, uh, its 50 month moving average. And when it's 130% above its 50-month 50 50 moving average, yep. it tends to pull back yep. about 20%. So buybacks should be I was going to say, it looks a little vertical there in that yeah. chart. Really quick word, are, are Treasury yields breaking down here? Or uh, well, you got to ask me that question. It's a, it's a tricky yeah. one. It's a tricky one. Uh, yes, purely on the charts, they are breaking down. The 10-year should be pointed towards 418 as the next support level. What's giving me issue here is that I'm noticing that credit spreads are starting to widen out a little bit, yeah. and the dollar is insanely strong here as well. Why won't it break down? So mm. I've been using this term like technical Goldilocks would have to be underneath you know, 430 on the 10-year. Yeah. But breath is negative four to one today. Yeah, right. And it's a ton of new when, lows. When we're under so there, I think yeah. we need to see more evidence that growth is not deteriorating. Sure. And I think that's what the market is, is expecting. That's what we need to be occupied with. John, great to see you. Thanks Good so to much. See you, Mike.